Welcome to our White Car Heaven studio. Ah, today with the VW Tygo, an all new small SUV here on Autogefühl with Thomas. And let's go directly with the front because we have the R-Line design, the top trim level with a honeycomb structure right here in the front grille. A strong stance on the road. Light strip goes all the way across the vehicle. LED is standard. Matrix LED is even option. They call it IQ Light. Quite rare in this segment. And also the lower bumper here is actually quite strong. And you know, what's about this vehicle, the new Tygo? It has been known before as VW Nevos and was sold in Brazil. This one here now, the S Tygo, so I changed the name basically, is also for the European market and for some other markets. It has some resemblance definitely, but also some differences. They all sit on the MQB A0 platform. The same with the VW T-Cross. This here is kind of the SUV coupe crossover version of the T-Cross and the price still less than 20,000 euros, but there's more trunk space. So this is a very interesting concept. 4 minus 27 or 168 inches is the length of the VW Tygo. The wheelbase, the same with the VW T-Cross, but then it has a longer rear overhang right there. So overall, it's around 17 centimeters or seven inches longer than the VW T-Cross. In height, this one here, the Tygo sits between Polo and the T-Cross. So the Polo the lowest, then comes the Tygo, and the highest would be the T-Cross. So somewhat crossover, and you can see here this crossover coupe shape, so a sportier line for that. And in the R line, once again, sportier styling also, for example, at the side right there. And wheels, 16.2, maximum 18 inch wheels. These here are the 18 inch wheels, the biggest ones that are available. So indeed a quite sporty styling for such a small car. And there are more surprises to come very soon. Take a look at that, the rear has this typical shape here of the SUV coupes we know from bigger segments and very beautiful done here is the tail and signature also very modern and with this glass look right here but then in the lower end when we have the R line auto fuel fake exhaust police alert yeah this is a clear case for that the real exhaust underneath but the R-Line does have this contrasting styling in the lower end this looks quite cool and now comes the biggest surprise Tygo here in the big lettering let's open that hatch right here and we have ta -da, four boxes here with water literally liters 438 liters is the total capacity of that here with these 0.5 bottles so really impressive this is a size of a compact segment although we're not in a compact segment width here almost a meter or 40 inches and the length right here is 32 inches or around 80 centimeters. So this is also different than to the T-Cross. The Tygo here has way more trunk capacity and this is also what's making this car so special actually. So just remember we have the sportier look on the exterior with the SUV coupe or crossover shape. Oh we have to close it properly. There we go. <laughs> the light also goes on again. But at the same time, we have more trunk capacity. Usually, when you have a sporty look on SUV Coupe, you have less capabilities, as for now, flexibility, trunk space, and so on. In this case, it's the other way around. This is making this car very interesting, so relatively low price, sporty look, but at the same time, more trunk. Towing up to 1.2 tons. There's no towing hook here available at the moment, but it's a good option, so you can also use it for that. Engines, turbo petrol engines only, one liter with 95 or 110 horsepower, a three cylinder, or the 1.5 liter four cylinder with 150 horsepower. This is the car key, standard, rather old school, but actually quite useful. And also keyless entry here with holding hand on the outside to close it. And we also have in the high trim, the automatically folding mirrors, hold on the inside and then door closing sound. Very solid, I like that. And the interior here with the R-Line styling package. Here, and we know this from the NQB A0, also in the Polo, we have hard pack inside of the doors. It's of course not too good, but remember, we're also low on the price. Good door pockets here. Then the R-Line also features this R-Line steering wheel and modern controls. Yes, still normal buttons, no touch BS. Glad to have them here, for example, for the cruise control on the left side and also a proper switch here for the lights and so on. Really glad to have them. The R-Line seats are the most spectacular one, and also the most comfortable one. The normal base fabric seat would look a little bit more simple. The R-Line here comes then with the microfiber accentuations in gray. This looks really premium. 
gives a great atmosphere. Of course, in this case, with this trim, it also an easily exceeds the 20k in the price. And getting inside, as I said, you sit higher than in the Polo, but lower than in the T-Cross, and that's a very interesting position in between. So if you're not the SUV fan, but also you want a little bit more comfort than in the Polo than in the normal, not a small car, that could be a sweet spot for you. Then steering wheel up and down, in and out, easy process, really good build quality as for this. And the seat here, lowest position, Pump it up, y'all. <laughs> can do it like this. But if I leave it all the way low, one means A6, six with one, it gets close here, but it works. That's the thing where the T-Cross also is better, it just has more headroom. Here, however, there's an option with the panoramic roof. So, um, yeah, when we turn on the ignition, we can also open that. It's a cool option, also leave some light inside, but it will cost you a little bit headroom. So depending on how tall you actually are. This is also a major difference here, <laughs> by the way, if you, uh, if you think about the difference to the Nevos in Brazil. <laughs> so here, the European version gets this panoramic roof exclusively. This one here is also built in Pamplona in Spain, whereas the Brazilian version, the Nevos, does not offer panoramic roof and is also built in Brazil. Interior overview, we can see here soft touch, the top part, and also here soft touch. And everything is rather cleanly designed. Infotainment comes in 6.5, 8 inch, or then 9.2 inch. This one here is the biggest one available. However, this one is also completely buttonless. So, for example, the volume control here with touch BS. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we just have to name it how it is. And you can have a control here at the steering wheel. So, um, that's a better solution then. Digital instruments come standard in 8 inch or then here 10.25 inch. So this is then the maximum setup you see right here. And in this biggest version, we can also have maps on both sides. So in the instruments and also right here in that infotainment system. With the instruments, we can also change the view a little bit. So we can have also the map all over the screen if we like. So and they're actually very clear to read. And once again, the buttons on the steering wheel are very good to control and also resemble with a very good build quality. Here with the infotainment system up close, when we take a look at that, we have a standard menu structure like this. This is better than with the all new Volkswagens. However, near the map, for example, could still be more responsive. It was better a couple of years ago when these infotainment systems were not that, you know, elaborated from the software, but were also just easier to use, basically. Apple CarPlay looks like this from the integration. And you can have a 300 watt Beats sound system. Climate unit, this looks really fancy here. And also with touch sliders, four touch sliders. It's actually quite easy to control, but still, the menu knobs are easier and better for the user interface. And the good thing is, this here, what you see, is a fancy option. You do not have to go for it. If you just stay with the base version, even in the higher trim levels, you still have manual climate knobs. And I would really recommend to stick with the simpler solution. Then lower end, two USB-C chargers, smartphone, but also inductive charging pad is underneath. The Apple CarPlay or Android Auto also works wirelessly if you like. There's no DCC option here or something, but you still have a driving mode selector that if you have the automatic gearbox, the DSG, dual clutch transmission, then also for the throttle input is changed, for example still manual handbrake and we need that for rally cross and so on you know then 12 volt power supply here like this and then non-adaptive cup holders they're actually quite small but well attached is this armrest here nice paper cover and then some more space underneath and you can also get the latest travel assist here for the vw taiko that means it's the most elaborated assistance systems where you have adaptive cruise control and also side lane keep assist combined Everything controlled in here at the steering wheel and also with a capacitive function. In the rear, here in the R-Line, we also have these quite attractive fabric combination with a microfiber as well. So that looks quite fancy. Single seat setup visually. You also have the third seat then in the middle part. And let's get inside, check that out with the legroom. It's a very short vehicle, we know that, but this platform here offers quite decent usage of space. So with four tall adults, it's actually no problem. And also the headroom, although it has this falling roof line, no problem with one with A6 or six with one. And it's actually fairly comfortable here in the rear. So the middle seat is, let's see, 
of course a little bit higher but since it's also fabric it's actually quite okay so that's a very good result even five tall adult proof basically you'll also have two usb-c connectors here in the middle part and then there's no armrest here whatsoever but you can also fold the seats and this you're doing right from here then you have even more loading length if you like so of course it's very interesting to compare this one here to the <laughs> yeah thomas in the rear seat we always indicate it in the time codes i know some just love to do that so interesting to compare this one here to the vw pole there has recently been a facelift you also find that video and auto view and of course also to the vw t-cross because that's the closest sibling but i think very interesting approach right here because it combines you know this SUV coupe shape with an even bigger trunk and we have more interesting videos to follow so please subscribe and stay with us.